Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Approximately 12 noon in Honolulu. It is Friday, the 23rd day of December, and this is the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. Well, we're getting near Christmas and near very thin trading as we go in between, of course, the season's holidays concluding with New Year's in a little over a week. We have had gold trading slightly higher this morning, but holding above 1600 up about $1.50. As you can see, current print on the board, 1606.40. That is the cash market. Silver, approximately unchanged, down about two cents. And as you can see, our current print on the board is around 2908. And that is in the March COMEX silver. Traders, well, the holiday weekend is amongst us. This is Friday, and we are going into the official holiday season with Christmas to New Year's. And I do want to wish everyone the greatest of all possible holidays and the best of all possible New Year's. This week's market was interesting. We had a couple of nice rallies. One of them was in the equities markets, the global equities markets. This is the U.S. equities markets, the Standard & Poor's. 500 and it is in Hankinashi format. It's Japanese average, simply meaning it takes into account the prior session and compares it with this session. We're really looking for a couple of pieces of information in this. One, of course, you can see how clear trend definition is. Green candles on the way up, you get a succession of them, you get a succession on the way down, of course, on a correction of the red candles. The really Two important components that you want to look at when you're looking at a Hankinashi are first the size, the body size of the candles and the body size relative to the ones preceding it. Because if the body size is growing, it means the strength, the trend, excuse me, is strengthening. And the second thing that you want to look at is when a market is in a strong trend, you get this absence of these lower wicks on the upside, as you can see, and as that trend begins to weaken, these lower tails begin to appear, and you can see that right in here, where it kind of leveled off a bit before moving higher here. Same can be said for the market when it moves down. When the market's moving down, of course, you want to compare body sizes, and you want to see the absence of these lower wicks. Now, that being said, let's take a look at this week. When we see, this of course is each day's trading activity, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you can see that we did hit our bottom right at the beginning of the week. And you can see that it was really capped towards the end of last week. You got these tails. On Monday, we had a tail and a very, very small bodied candle, but then that kind of took off. And you can see that since that, we have had a trend that has been increasing in size. And you can say that because the body size has been stable but large and the absence of wicks. So good rally in the standard and pours. Opposite happening right now in the dollar index. Again, Hank and Ashi, you can see this pivot or reversal turning point in there as you look at these in terms of a doji format, meaning the open and close are the same. And you can usually see that, especially in a Hank and Ashi chart, really at the critical reversal points, the tops and the bottoms of the market. It's not always there, but for the most part, as a market reverses, it's got to at one point stop the direction it's been going in and then reverse. And I always look at the doji as that reversal point. So you have some weakness in the dollar, but if you notice in today's trading, you're not really getting any kind of true definition or a strong trend down. So that market could be choppy, but we'll see if it wants to continue lower throughout next week and, of course, next year. And that takes us to our gold and silver market. Now, I put out a special report. This is, I believe, Wednesday of this week, and that was when we were really flustering with this $1,600 area. And to be quite honest, we still are. We are above it, but we are certainly not out of the woods yet. You can see that at least on a short-term basis, on a tentative basis, 1601, which is a 50% retracement from this move up here. And when I say this move, I'm talking about the 1560 low 
up to about 1642 this short-term low traders this is a very very short-term chart it's only 240 minutes a two-hour candlestick chart you can see that it's been flirting with this 1600 dollar area but the key is even though it hasn't held support it hasn't really been able to move much further off of this line because my expectation is that this and we're looking at a minor wave count I have been expecting this wave count really to do a five one two three four we hit four but once we hit four it kind of walked away from the pattern itself whether it's the liquidity in the market meaning that it's getting thin due to Christmas we'll have to see how that pans out but I am expecting one more rally that rally should take us back to these high 1642 maybe a little bit higher I'm not expecting that much maybe as high as 1650 and then if we actually do get a five count in the market I would expect to see this market actually have one more correction before we are totally out of the woods meaning before we go back into an impulse phase and what I mean by that is we have to take a look at a longer term chart and my sentiment is this this also is in Henkin Ashi but it allows us to do our count much easier when we go from B to C typically you're going to get a five count one two three I believe that this is four here and then one final wave down fifth that would conclude not only our intermediate C but it would also conclude our major four and then from there it would take us into the last of the major impulse waves which would be wave five now if the major wave five is anything like the intermediate five that we've just witnessed and that is this area right in here starting in July where we saw the market roughly take off from what about 14 1450 all the way up to 1900 1920 on the high that was a tremendous tremendous move when you consider that the retracement that we are currently experiencing has given back up roughly 61 percent of those gains we can see that very quickly by simply looking at a Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high and then let me carry that over so that we can all see where those lines line up here you'll notice that it's actually gone below at this point a 76 percent retracement of this last rally it's given back much of it but if we are to hold true uh, to Elliott Wave, there is a real distinct possibility that we will complete this wave four here and then get one final wave down. The way that we'll be able to tell, of course, is whether or not it breaks above or below certain areas. And that will give us definitive information as to whether or not C and our major four have concluded or if we still have one more leg down now silver has also been following suit this again a Hankinashi chart of our daily chart but as you can see we're not getting any kind of vibrancy or rallies like we saw in the other markets you're getting a continuation of this downtrend but at the same time you're getting these very very small bodied candles small bodied candles like this can be found and are indicative of a market right before it breaks out you can see that right in here and I'm looking at the body size not necessarily the tails the body size is much much more important in fact we look for a lack of tails within the Hankin so you can see I'm still very very neutral to neutrally bearish on silver right now but I do believe that it will follow the footsteps of gold and I do believe that gold has one more rally before a final correction capping one of the largest moves ever witnessed in the precious metals we'll have to see I want to wish all of you a blessed holiday season this has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading and we'll talk to you on Monday for another daily review and update bye bye